Hey, look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. You are. Ali. Ali. And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Hello and welcome. We are live on air. I hope everybody is doing okay. I hope that my sound is crystal clear. Let me know if you can hear me in the live chat by giving me a one. Welcome guys. God bless you. God bless your loved ones, including the Muslims who always curse us at least 70 times a day when they repeat the Shahada and <clears throat> Al-Fatiha, Al-Fatiha brother please Allah don't curse us like the Jews and the Christians Muslims always repeat Allah, Allah please don't curse us like the Jews and the Christians welcome everybody uh, let me say hi to our friends to our family in Christ First to our admins, Debit Rai, TM Crosspoles, Carolina. We are blessed. Keep our admins in your prayers, guys. Keep us in your prayers. Andrew Martin, how are you, my friend? Fitsum, Garuma, Ray E, Peter the Wall, the Mecca Prophet, Romeo D'Amelio Sanchez, Shelly RK, Pena Saran. Snow Leopard, X Islam, Connie A, Longish of Jerusalem, another admin. How are you, my friend? God bless you. Peter M, Potter, Betty, Free B. Hey, Free B, how are you, my Shia friend? How are you? How are you? Welcome, my friend. I, you know, I said it in the live chat, uh, Free B. Uh, it's funny and it's irony that you call yourself a Free B. But uh, Allah in the Quran in chapter 16, ayah 69 says that bees poop honey. I mean, you must be a Muslim in 2020 to believe in that. Bees poop honey? It's funny, man. Truly, uh, you know, this Quran is truly not man-made, brother. Welcome, everybody. Before we start, I want to ask you to pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, let us... Start. Lord, dear Lord, bless our beloved audience and subscribers. Lord, thank you for your grace. True, Jesus is truly risen and risen is he indeed. Al-Masih qam, haqqan qam. It's a historical fact. Thank you for your ultimate gift, Lord. Thank you for your grace that saved us from death and thank you for my lovely audience and subscribers who kept supporting us day in day out for the last year. Please bless them Lord and their loved ones and families. Keep all of us healthy and safe Lord, especially from the spread of this Corona virus, the coronavirus. Fathers, enfold us in your arms, help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our word, thoughts and actions. Please, Father, give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, any taqiyya, deception, maker of Allah, Satan, uh, lies or any doubt, Lord. Please help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us including the Muslims who might be searching for the truth. Please, Lord, open also their eyes so also they can be saved as we are saved through our Holy Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without any error or any shame. And please, Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do whatever 
whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome everybody. We are live on air. Today we will have the opportunity to investigate if Muhammad is mentioned in the Holy Bible. Muslims love to tell you that Muhammad is mentioned in the Holy Bible. Is that true? Let us see. And that's the topic of today. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload videos. Also make sure to subscribe to our social media like Facebook. And if you want to support our full-time ministry, you can do that on patreon.com slash Rob Christian. Welcome. God bless you. Let us start, guys. Let us start. Prophet Muhammad mentioned in the Holy Bible. Prophet Muhammad mentioned in the Holy Bible. That's the topic of today. I hope, guys, you are interested in this topic. I really hope you do, right? We are not scared to talk about such topics, right? Muslims think that we are scared to go to the Bible and destroy their claims. We are not scared, Abdul. We do this week in, week out. We are not scared of you. You are the ones who are scared of us because you are the ones who do not dare to call us. Your apologists, your so-called heroes, are scared to call us. I wonder why. I mean, if you are followers of Deen al-Haq, the religion of truth, you call yourself a follower as a Muslim of the religion of truth. Why are you so scared to call us life on air? Huh? Huh? Hmm. Interesting. So guys, <clears throat> let us see what Muslims have to say about this. To the Christians who are watching, to the Christians who are watching, I'm talking to you Christians. I hope you are with me guys. Give me one if you are with me to know that you are listening. To the Christians, know that the burden of proof when it comes to this topic that Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible, Know that the burden of proof is on the Muslims. It's not on you. I see many Christians, unfortunately, I see many Christians try their best to prove that Muhammad is not mentioned in the Bible. Don't do that, Christians. The burden of proof is on the Muslims. Only thing you do have to do is ask them where. But before you ask them where, tell them, do you believe that your prophet said that... He worships the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the Holy Bible. Is Allah the same God of the Holy Bible? Is He father to mankind? Muslim will say no. So what kind of God are you talking about? How dare you to, <laughs> how dare you to, to, to claim that Allah, who is father to no one, as the Quran says, how dare you insult Allah? Our holy God by comparing him, calling him Allah. It's an insult because God of the Holy Bible, he is father to mankind. Totally different gods, different gods. But anyway, guys, let that go. Let it go. So the burden of proof is on the Muslims, not on you Christians. You know, don't feel, you know, cornered or whatever. Learn how to deal with this. And second, Muslims are the ones who have to prove where Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah and the Injil, right? It's on them, not on us. They are the ones who have to prove that to us, right? Not the other way around. We don't need the Quran to prove that Christianity is the truth. We don't need it. It's on them. All right, guys, learn from this, please. Help me to help you. All right, guys? Always remind yourself these two points, all right? Learn how to deal with this, all right? If we go to 1 John verse 
22 from chapter 2, verse John, chapter 2, verse 22. It says the following, Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. Did Muhammad deny the Father and the Son? Yes, he did. Muhammad did deny the Father and the Son. Right? So who is the Antichrist? Muhammad. And who are other Antichrists? The Muslims who follow Muhammad. Did you catch it? If we go to the next verse, it even makes it more worse for Muhammad and his followers. It says in the next verse, chapter 2, verse 23, No one who denies the Son has the Father. Do you see it? So if you deny Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, you deny the Father, you deny God Himself, God the Father in heaven. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you Muslims, your prophet and you, you are nothing but agents of Satan. Your prophet is the prophet of Satan and you are the followers of Satan and his agent, Muhammad. You actually, when you go to the Bible, you prove to us that Muhammad is an agent of Satan. Congratulations, Muslims. Congratulations. Give yourself a big applaud, Muslims. All right. So if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. You deny God of the Holy Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So guys, do you now see how Islam and Muhammad are nothing but a huge insult for the living God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? It's an insult. Islam is an insult. Welcome. We just started uh, Bruno Christian. Welcome my friend. Welcome to the people who just joined. We just started. You didn't miss much. Right? We didn't miss much. You didn't miss much. We just started. Alright? Now. No, no, no. What about the Muslim apologists of today, guys? What about them, Rob Christian? Some smarter Muslim apologists, guys. I, I'm not talking about Adnan Rashid. He's not really that smart. He's not really that bright. And we proved that in many videos already by spanking him and barbecuing him. And serving him for everybody to see. We barbecued him and served him over and over. So he's not, not really that bright. He's not really that smart. So some smarter Muslims, apologists, stopped going to Deuteronomy 18, for example. They stopped doing that. I kid you not. Only the stupid ones still go there. Because Deuteronomy 18... Right? Deuteronomy 18, when they go to that chapter to prove Muhammad is in there, they know that these verses completely decimate Muhammad. They know that chapter 18 destroys Muhammad. So they even stopped going there. The smart Abduls. So most of them are now trying out their luck with Isaiah 42. Yes, Isaiah 42. And I saw a Abdul, I think... Uh, He's maybe still there in the live chat who said, yeah, Muhammad is mentioned in Isaiah 42. I have a surprise for you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Abdul. Abdul, are you there? The one who said Isaiah 42. I have a very huge surprise for you, brother. Right? Hey, brother Chris Kloss. How are you, my friend? God bless you. Guys, we have our brother Chris Kloss in the live chat. He's a very, very dear brother of mine. He also is from the Paul Talk era, right? We used to debate on Paul Talk, teach on Paul Talk. Chris Kloss, welcome, my friend. Our brother Chris Kloss, also subscribe to him, guys. The one that I just mentioned again in the live chat. He debated Shabir Ali. That's Shabir Ali, yeah. He debated him and he decimated him in that debate so help our brother here subscribe and support his ministry on youtube guys god bless you my friend chris claus it's a blessing to have you here my friend god bless you so muslims of today they try out their luck with isaiah 42 but 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 guys i hope you're paying attention they are not that bright either why rob christian why because 
They call Muhammad and Allah liars. What? So when you go to Isaiah 42, when Muslim apologists, they go to Isaiah 42, they call Allah Muhammad liars? Yes, and here is why. Here is why, all right? Here is why. Here is why. Chapter 7, guys, take notes for the love of God. If you want to help me to help you, take your pens out, take some paper and start writing. And let me give you the link to this chapter and ayah of the Quran to learn from this. Let me give you the link. Here's the link. All right, guys. Let me explain to you why Muslim apologists, when they go to Isaiah 42, why they are calling Muhammad and Allah liars. And here's why. Chapter 7, Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah 157. Now watch. It says, الَّذِينَ يَتِّبْعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّيَّ الَّذِي يَجْدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ Now guys, if we continue reading, it says, في التوراتي والانجيلي So, those who follow Muhammad, the messenger, the Gentile, you see the Gentile? Whenever you see al-ummi or al-ummiya or al-ummiyun, it always has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with people who cannot write or read, no, no. When it comes to religion, it has with people who are spiritually, spiritually blind, right? They are blind. They have the scripture, right? They have the scripture in their hands, but they can read it, but don't understand it. So they are spiritually blind, right? Even in the Arabic, when we talk about uh, the pre-Islamic era, right? Al-Jahiliya, the pre-Islamic era, pre-Islamic Muslims, the pagans of Mecca, they used to be called al ummiyun Did you hear it? al ummiyun Now why is that, people? Why are they called al ummiyun Because they are pagans. They are spiritually illiterate. Not, <laughs> it doesn't mean that they cannot read and write. The whole ummah, the whole nation are called al ummiyun So the whole Arab nation before Islam, are called al ummiyun which means they are spiritually dead they are pagans that's why so it doesn't mean you cannot read and write all right guys and you see it right this is not my translation this is the translation by ahmed ali and it says the gentile prophet muhammad is called the gentile prophet do you see it he's not called the illiterate prophet he is, Muhammad did not receive the Quran of Allah. So this is why he's called Al-Ummi or Al-Ummiya. Right? So Muhammad could actually write and read. Even if you go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad on his deathbed is asking for pen and paper. But this ayah proves that Muhammad is not illiterate as he cannot write and read. No, he's spiritually illiterate. He did not receive the Quran of Allah yet. Did you catch it, guys? The proof is in front of you. It doesn't say a literate prophet. It says the Gentile prophet. Bam! And on top of that, this ayah actually proves, right? It proves that the Torah and the Injil, right? The Torah and the Injil, the gospel, are not corrupted. Because it's saying, you know, that they have access to it. Do you see it? How, how dare you Muslim to claim that the Torah and the Injil are corrupted? Well, this ayah says, you know, that you can find him, you can find the Gentile prophet or the spiritually dead prophet in your Torah and Injil. So <laughs> the Torah and the Injil in the time of Muhammad is uncorrupted. So are you saying that Allah is a liar? Muhammad are liars when they told you to recite this ayah. When you received this ayah from Muhammad. Was Muhammad a liar when he said go 
to the Torah and the Gospel. Is Allah saying, go to the corrupted Torah and Gospel? Muslims. Thank you for the donation, radical love. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. Thank you for the super chat. Guys, I hope you are un taking notes and understanding what I'm teaching you here. D guys, did you catch it? Did you catch it? Sal John, oh, thank you for this donation. God bless you, Rob. Joel Sal John is saying, thank you too for the super chat, my friend. God bless you. So Muhammad here is called the Gentile prophet. He's not called the illiterate prophet as Muslims claim him to be that he cannot write and read and only not only that he is described in the Torah and the gospel now question here is the one million dollar question to the Christians who are watching is the book of Isaiah is the book of Isaiah is it part of the Torah or the gospel is Isaiah Is Isaiah 42 part of the Torah or Gospel? Is the book of Isaiah, is it part of the Gospel or the Torah? I see a lot of no's, 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 nope, nope, no, no. So do you see why I made that claim guys? So most of the Muslim apologists, they try their leg out with Isaiah 42. And I said, but they are not that bright either. And they call Muhammad and Allah liars. And here's why. Here is why. Because when you go to Isaiah, which is not part of the Torah, it's not part of the gospel. That is actually proving to us that you Muslim apologists, the heroes of today, the so-called Muslim apologists, we know they are deceivers and liars. They call Allah and Muhammad liars when they go to Isaiah because Muhammad in his Quran, the yellow pages of Allah is clearly stating, if you want to find Muhammad, if you want to find Muhammad, the Gentile prophet Muhammad, he is described in the Torah and the gospel. It does not say you, you can also go to Isaiah. It says clearly Torah and gospel. Do you see it? So, Muslim apologists who go to Isaiah 42, they are showing you Christians, they are showing you their ignorance and they are showing you at the same time that they are nothing but liars and deceivers. So this is why I said in the beginning of my live show, know that the burden of proof is on the Muslims. Muslims are the ones who have to prove where Muhammad is mentioned in the Torah and in Jeel. Right Christians? So when they go to Isaiah, Give them this ayah, chapter 7, ayah 157. Let me give it again in the chat. Spank them with it. Guys, learn how to debate Muslims, please. Learn how to debate Muslims. Whenever they go to the book of Isaiah 42, spank them with chapter 7, ayah 157. All right? Tell them, when you go to Isaiah 42, are you trying to tell us, that Muhammad is lying? Is Allah a liar or is Muhammad a liar? Because they clearly stated in chapter 7, if you want to find Muhammad, go to the Torah and the Gospel. Isaiah is not part of the Torah and not part of the Gospel. Right? Bam! Learn from this, guys. Karian, we just started actually, so don't worry. Welcome, sister. How are you, Karian? Do you see it? I hope you got it. Let it sink in, guys. Let it sink in. Do you see how Muslims are actually liars when they go to Isaiah? So the apologists who try out their luck with Isaiah 42 are calling Allah and Muhammad liars. And maybe you already seen Maybe you already seen that video of the merciful servant, the biggest Muslim YouTube channel, right? The biggest Muslim YouTube channel on YouTube mentioning chapter 42 of Isaiah, right? Chapter 2, 42 of Isaiah. And they are 
saying the following guys put on your headsets let me play the video maybe you have already seen it but you know it's never funny enough to play it to show you the ignorance and not only the ignorance the blasphemy of the muslims and this is a at least two million subscribers youtube channel two million subscribers subscribe to that youtube channel let me play that video guys and try not to laugh all right let me play the video Here's the video guys, put on your headsets and let us show you the ignorance and the blasphemers, the shirk ones who are calling themselves Muslim apologists. I say it states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies throughout. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, guys, for the people who just joined, let me show you the blasphemy. Let me show you the blasphemy of these people, man. Let me show you the blasphemy of these people. He quoted Isaiah 42, 13, right? You saw it, right? This is Isaiah 42, guys. Let me go back. You see it? Isaiah 42. The same chapter that he's quoting from. Now let me go back to verse 13. I hope you are paying attention, guys. Let me show you the blasphemy and how they play with our Holy Bible. What did this Abdul do of merciful servant? He removed the two words, the Lord, and placed there Muhammad. So you see how Muslims call Muhammad the God of the Holy Bible. That's blasphemy. That is the highest form of blasphemy removing the name of our god jehovah the lord removing uh, him and placing three dots which is an ellipsis <laughs> calling it muhammad so muslims are showing us that they are nothing but blasphemers showing us that they are nothing but pagans worshiping muhammad you blasphemers this is the highest form of blasphemy. Do you see this? Did you catch it? Muslim number one YouTube channel on YouTube with 2 million subscribers. The merciful servant are blaspheming. Pretending that Muhammad is the Lord, is the God. Well, my Siri just went on. <laughs> Even my Siri wants to add herself into the mix. Siri, shut up. <laughs> Even Siri does not agree with the Muslims, man. Siri, I don't need your help for now. So the Muslim ser merciful servant channel removed the name of God, the Lord, Yehovah, and placed three dots. Look how they play with the biblical text, guys. Look how they are corrupting our holy Bible with their own hands. By removing the Lord and placing Muhammad there. Do you see the blasphemy? Do you see the corruption by Muslim hands? SGD, thank you so much for your, uh, or sorry, Jacob Matthew, for your super chat. Thank you so much. Jacob Matthew, thank you for your donation, my friend. God bless you. Right? For the people who just joined, maybe you missed the part. Let me go back, okay? Look how they are placing three dots and claim that it's Muhammad. He will be a warrior. And he will, will be a warrior. Muhammad will be a warrior. As a mighty man. He shall... You see the three dots? They remove the name of God. <laughs> placing three dots and claiming that this is, this is Muhammad. Stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Throughout history, God has dealt sternly with those who are sent guidance and persist in disbelief. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to see, engage it's about in Muhammad, many brother. battles with the idol worshipping. The warrior prophet, brother. Muhammad is the warrior prophet and he is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right, Muslims? You see deception and blasphemy? So here we found how they use deception by playing with the Bible. And number two, they are blaspheming. Muslim apologist, number one YouTube channel, blasphemes, removing the name of God and put there Muhammad instead. 
Wow! How dare you? How dare you to play with our Holy Bible, removing the name of our Holy Lord, the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yehovah, from verse 13 of Isaiah 42. So guys, in other words, not only are they calling Allah and Muhammad liars, because Muhammad, as we showed you in chapter 7, I 157, <laughs> is, should be only mentioned in the Torah and the Injil, right? Only in the Torah and Injil, they go to Isaiah 42, play with the Holy Bible, remove the name of our Holy God, and place Muhammad there. Shame on you, Muslims. Muslim apologists, shame on you. Shame on you. You truly have no honor, you have no shame, and you have no dignity when you do that. You see how Muslim apologists are nothing but liars and deceivers. Calling Allah and Muhammad liars, and they play with our Holy Bible with their own hands. But we know Muslim apologists have no honor, have no shame, have no dignity. Else why you are still a Muslim in 2020, right? Filthy, disgusting creatures. Filthy agents of Satan. When you do that. When you play with our Holy Bible. Shame on you. As we said, guys, we can waste our precious time and go to so-called prophecies about Muhammad like Isaiah 42. It's a waste of time because we already told you that in chapter 7, I 157, it clearly states the Gentile prophet described in the Torah and the gospel, not in the book of Isaiah because Isaiah is not part of the Torah. It's not part of the gospel. It's not part of the five books that were written by Moses. It comes after the Torah, in between the Gospel and the Torah. So it's, the, basically in a nutshell, Isaiah is in between the Gospel and the Torah. Right? It's not part of the Torah. It's the Tanakh, exactly. Thank you, uh, child of Jesus Christ, exactly. So they are calling Muhammad a liar, and they're calling their own prophet a liar, and they, on top of that, they use deception, play with our Holy Bible, removing words from the Holy Bible, and blaspheme our Holy Lord and Savior. Disgusting creatures, man. Filthy agents of Satan, when you do that. So guys, as I said, so we should not waste our time. So Christians, learn, learn. You should not waste your time by going to other sources. Force them to go to the Torah and force them to go to the Gospel because that's what the Quran says. Do not allow Muslims to fool you. Did you catch it? Learn. Learn how to debate Muslims, guys. Learn from this. Please, help me to help you. Alright? Don't waste your time by trying to refute them from the book of Isaiah 42. Like this Muhammad Hijab, Muhammad Hijab went there, Ali Dawa went there, Rashad, uh, Adnan Rashid, the idiot, right? And Merciful Servant that we just showed you, the number one YouTube channel, they are doing the same. Don't allow them, guys. Be smarter. All right? I hope you are benefiting. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the not so smart apologists who still go to Deuteronomy 18, 18 to prove that that's talking about Muhammad, they are actually shooting themselves in the, feet, uh, in the foot, in the feet, and they prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. Watch. Watch, guys. This is Deuteronomy 18, 18, and I also want to go to Deuteronomy 20. So Muslims, when we ask them, show us in the Old Testament, right, in the Torah, where Muhammad is mentioned, they go to Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, this verse here. It says the following, read with me please. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Question, this is in the time of the Israelites, right? Is Muhammad a Israelite brother? brother? Is Muhammad an Israelite? That's the question. Is Muhammad an Israelite, Muslims? Or is he a Muslim? Big no. So here this, <laughs> when you go to there, it immediately proves that Muhammad is a false prophet. This cannot be about Muhammad. He must be a brethren of the Israelites. 
Among, among, among. Do you see it? Among. Again, among their brethren. Among, from among their brethren. He must be an Israelite. He must come from the line of Isaac. The prophetic bloodline that God made a covenant with. God made a covenant with Isaac and Isaac alone. From his blood, from his prophetic bloodline must come the true prophets. Not from Ishmael. If you Muslims claim it's from Ishmael, you have an, a very huge disaster, a very huge dilemma to deal with. Exactly, Chris Claus. Chris Claus saying in the following in the live chat. Guys, let me quote what he said. Our dear brother Chris Claus is a very amazing apologist. Help his YouTube channel, guys. Click on his name and subscribe to him too. Chris Claus says, Rob Christian, the term from among your brethren of from among is used 13 times only for the Israelites. Exactly. It only goes back to the Israelites. Thank you for that, uh, Chris Claus. I have to agree with you, man. It's true what you say. So Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Thank you for going to this verb, right? Muslims actually who are smart, as we mentioned to you, Muslims who are smart, except Adnan Rashid, they stopped going to Deuteronomy 18 because this verse decimates Muhammad completely. It annihilates Muhammad. It proves that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. And if we continue reading and we go to verse 20, Watch what's happened, what is going to happen. Now we are going to finish Muhammad completely off. We're going to finish him. Not only decimate him, but finish him completely. Put the nail, la final nail on his coffin. Right? If we read this, it says, But the Prophet, if you claim this is Muhammad Muslims, But that Prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So if Muslims claim this is the, the prophet that Deuteronomy 18 is talking about, you have to deal with the fact that if Muhammad lived in the time of Moses, Moses himself would have grabbed stones and ordered his fellow brethren to pick up stones too and throw it at Muhammad. Throw stones at Muhammad and kill him. Why? Because Muhammad mentioned Allah, who is a fake God, he is not clearly not Jehovah, and on top of that, Muhammad bowed down to the idols of Mecca, to Allah al Uzza wal Manat. And when he delivered the satanic verses, he said, Let me quote the Arabic first. These are the high cranes. These are the high cranes, the mighty cranes. Their intercession is hoped for. Those are the satanic verses. So Muhammad will be put to death if he was walking <laughs> between the Israelites in the time of Moses. Moses would have ordered his men to stone Muhammad. al gharaniq yes. The high cranes. The exalted cranes, right? And actually, let me prove to you guys. <laughs> Rob Christian, you are really bringing down the hammer on Muhammad tonight. Or today, whatever, wherever you are, guys. Tomorrow, today, in the morning, in the evening, I don't care. We are here to spank Muhammad. Let me prove to you who killed Muhammad, guys. Let me prove to you that Allah killed Muhammad. What did you say, Rob Christian? Allah killed Muhammad, yes. So guys, pay attention, take notes. Forget the Muslims who are talking in the live chat. Guys, I really want to address everyone who is talking in the live chat, but I cannot teach and see what the live chat is saying, okay? Some, so now and then I will look, but I am missing a lot. I know, I know guys. You know, bear with me please. I cannot split myself in half. Pay attention at the same time to the live chat and cheat at, uh, and, sorry, and teach at the same time. So guys, watch. Let me prove to you that it's actually Allah who killed Muhammad. Watch. If we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, 
Let me give you the link. Copy, paste. Save this link, guys. Bookmark it. Use it. It says, narrated Aisha, the mother of the believers. Narrated Aisha, the mother of the believers. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is praying on him. In his ailment, in which he died, used to say, O oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. Guys, if you know the story, you should know that when Muhammad conquered Khaybar, he killed fathers, mothers, uncles, brothers, cousins. And a Jewish lady who was taken as prisoner, as a slave, she told Muhammad that she's going to prepare food for Muhammad. Now guys, guys, if you truly are the prophet of God and you are a very smart prophet as the Muslims claim him to be, should you not think, hey, I just killed her, her family, I wiped her whole family out, and this lady wants to prepare food for me? Don't you think that she, maybe, maybe there's a big chance that she's going to poison me? <laughs> Muhammad said, okay, prepare some food, delicious food, brother. And this Jewish lady, she put food, uh, poison in his food, in that meat. And when Muhammad ate it, you know, he started to become very ill from the poison. You know, they even, you know, even Aisha said, I've never seen someone suffer like Muhammad. Right? And then Muhammad actually confirming this, and he says, And at this time, Muhammad is saying, I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison. There is nothing called as if in the Arabic. This is bid'ah, this is added by the filthy liars, the translators. Right? It says in the Arabic, I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison. And here is my proof. وَجَدْتُ أَنْقَطَعَ أَبْهَرِي مِنْ ذَلِكَ السَّمْ Where does it say as if, you liars? I challenge any Muslim to show me where it says as if in the Arabic. I am an Arabic speaker. I challenge you, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the words as if. So remove the as if when you read this uh, hadith, guys. It says, I feel... That my aorta is being cut from the poison. Rob Christian, wait. Earlier you made a very harsh claim. You said Allah killed Muhammad. Yes, let me prove it to you. From the Quran. Chapter 69. Ayah 44. Chapter 69. Ayah 44. Let me give you the link. Guys, save those links. Use them in your debates. Rob Christian, Allah killed Muhammad. Yes. Allah was tired of Muhammad, his lies and deception, and he's the one who killed him. Let me prove it to you. Allah's prophet is killed by Allah himself because Allah became very tired of the lies of Muhammad. Here, chapter 69, let me read the Arabic. وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بِبَعْضِ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَدْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ أَلْوَتِينِ now let me read the translation guys for the people who are interested in the translation. Allah is saying, this is Allah talking, right? And if he, Muhammad, had forged a false saying. So if Muhammad fabricated lies concerning Allah. So if Muhammad lying about Allah. And Allah continues, we will surely should have seized him by his right hand. Or with power and might. So Allah would grab him. Grab Muhammad and the next verse saying, and here comes the hammer on the top of Muhammad, on the face of Muhammad, bringing down the hammer of Muhammad on him. And then certainly Allah saying, should have caught his life artery, the aorta of Muhammad. What did Muhammad say? I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison. I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison, Muhammad is saying. What did Allah say? And then certainly should have cut off his life artery, the aorta of Muhammad. ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ Right? ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ Do you hear it? So Muhammad... <laughs> Allah killed him. Muhammad is killed by Allah himself because Allah was tired of the lies and deception of Muhammad. 
and Muhammad confirming this in Sahih al-Bukhari. Speaking from Kif, Hira, Hira, Hira. This is Sahih, Sahih, Bukhari, Bukhari. Hadith number 4428. Muhammad confirming that Allah is the one who killed him by cutting off his aorta. And the proof is in front of me. Let it sink in, Muslims. Sahih, Sahih. Guys, let us have a nice <clears throat> coffee break because I'm out of water. I need to grab something to drink and we will continue from there. I better manifest some coffee. Now that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. Hola, Juan Valdez. Buenos días. Buenos días. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, señor. Adiós. Adiós. Ah, now that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. Hola, Juan Valdez. Buenos días. Buenos días. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, señor. Adiós. Adiós. Ah, now that's fresh mountain. All right, I'm back, guys. I'll be back. Yeah. We're back. We're here to continue the spanking of Muhammad and his man-made cult. So, guys, we proved to you that Allah got tired of Muhammad, right? And he's the one who cut off his live artery, the aorta of Muhammad, and Muhammad confirming this. Some Muslims will say, it's metaphor, brother. When Muslims start to feel the heat, the only way to save Muhammad's behind is by saying it's metaphor. Everything becomes a metaphor the moment we spank Muhammad. Can you understand this bankruptcy, guys? Every time we spank Muhammad, Proving that Muhammad is a false prophet, proving that Allah is the one who killed Muhammad. Muslims, when they can't answer, the only card that they can take out of their scumbag, scumbaggery, or what you call it, whatever you want to call it, the only way is, it's metaphor, brother, metaphor. That's the only thing they can do. It doesn't say that, RC. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Thank God that we Christians don't need to lie and use taqiyya to defend our religion. <clears throat> Guys, I hope you are benefiting from today's live show. I truly do. I hope that we are not wasting our time here. I hope you are learning. Guys, please, when I used to learn about Islam many, many years ago in on the Paul Talk panel where I started, I used to take notes, pen and paper, bookmark stuff, bookmark links, right? Bookmark, save everything that is being taught to you if you want to learn what we do, right? Please don't waste my time and you, your time. Learn, all right? We are here to learn, right? So I hope you got yourself something to drink as I did, so we can continue bringing down the hammer on this man-made, dark, death cult of Muhammad. Guys, and we showed you from Deuteronomy 18.20, right? If a prophet speaks from a different, about a different God, or he dares to mention even a God that is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that prophet shall die. And we prove to you that Muhammad was killed by Allah, right? If we go to chapter 22, 52, we show you the satanic verses. We don't even go to outside sources, right? We can go to the Quran to prove it to you. Muhammad, 
right? Muhammad, you know, lying about all the prophets, he says, never did we send a messenger or prophet before you, but when he did recite the scripture, let's say the Torah, Angel, or whatever, the Quran, or narrated or spoke, so whenever a prophet narrated revelation, delivered revelation of God to his people, always Satan, the most powerful guy in Islam, he's even more powerful than Allah, Satan, Shaitan, comes in between and throw his own satanic verses, the falsehood, in the words of Allah, on the tongue of the prophets, including Muhammad. But then Allah wakes from his sleep, Allah is sleep, always asleep, wakes up and sends Jibreel to abolish what Satan had done. It seems that Allah cannot keep his promises because in other ayahs of the Quran, Allah is repeating himself saying, I will make sure to protect my slaves. Where is the protection Muhammad? Muhammad became a pagan and he bowed down to Allah al-Uzza wal-Manat. Tilka al-Gharani qal-Ula, inna shafa'atahunna laturtija. Right? When Muhammad delivered the satanic verses. These are the high exalted cranes. Their intercession is hoped for. Muhammad said to the pagans of Quraysh, the pagans of Mecca. And the Meccans were very happy. They started to celebrate when Muhammad said these beautiful words about their idols, about Allah, Wal Uzza, Wal Manat. Right? So, because of this, Moses and his men would have ordered Muhammad to be stoned if Muhammad would have walked in the time of Moses. Moses himself, that Muslims love to compare Muhammad with, Moses himself would have killed Muhammad by stoning him. Guys, are you still with me? I hope you are still with me. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslims? We have eight dislikes. We have more than 200 people watching. And no Muslim is here to defend his prophet. What's wrong with these Muslims, man, today? The only thing they can dislike, spam the live chat, but they cannot defend their prophets. 447? No way. No, here it says 218. Did I miss something earlier? Really? Wow, another record. Guys, I'm really happy, guys. Thank you for this amazing support. 447 viewers. Guys, you know, God is good. Thank you for your amazing support, guys. Every time we break records here. That's good. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for the support from this amazing audience. Thank you, guys. Without you, we cannot do this. Guys, I cannot repeat myself enough. You do not need Rob Christian. You don't need me, guys. You don't need me. But, but, if it's the plan of God for me to teach, then so be it. We all need Jesus Christ. I'm a sinner. I need Jesus. You are sinners, you need Jesus, you don't need Rob Christian. But if it's the plan of God for me to teach and expose this disgusting man-made called Islam, then so be it. Thank you, Carrie Ann, God bless you. Thank you for the super chat. Carrie Ann says, you're an awesome teacher. I'm a nobody, Carrie Ann, I need Jesus. But thank you anyways, I appreciate it. I'm a hypocrite, I need Jesus. I need the truth, and who is the truth is Jesus himself. Ana huwa al-haq, al-tariq wa al-hayat. I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and life. Right? That's what Jesus said. He is the truth. This is why we need him. Who is better than Jesus? No one. Hussein Zamani. Call me, call me. The truth is your stupidity. <laughs> Look at the amazing words, the amazing intelligence of these Muslims of today. Instead of saying, Rob Christian, I'm going to call you and refute you. The guy, look at this guy, man. Look, look, you're a cutie pie, man. You're so cute. You're a cute Muslim, brother. 
You're so cute, man. I like your words, man. Thank you so much, man. Abdul, I'm going to open my Skype. And if you call yourself a man, a man of honor, and you can defend your disgusting code, call me. We are live, brother. My Skype is open. Uh, Christians, you are not allowed to call yet, okay? Let the Muslims first call. If you want to call as a Christian, you have to wait, all right? Any Muslim? Do you have any Muslim? <clears throat> My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Chris Kloss, brother, I hope that you will stick around because I really want to talk to you uh, when the Christians are allowed to talk. All right. So I hope you will stick around, brother. I really missed you and I hope that you're going to call me and add to our today's topic. Please, my, my friend. <clears throat> Any Muslim? We have Skype open, guys. Come on, look. Welcome, Rob. Welcome, brother. Call me, brother. Any Abdul? No Muslims. Hmm. We have no Muslims, but we have eight dislikes and we have many Muslims in the live chat. Amazing, amazing. No Muslim can stand up and protect his prophet from us, from spanking him. That's amazing. Guys, let us continue as long as we don't have Muslims. Let us continue. I'm going to play another video, guys. I'm going to play another video. This time from Shabir Ali. Chris Kloss, I know you like Shabir Ali, right? You debated him before. <laughs> Let us spank Shabir Ali for a second. I know you like it. You like it. I know, Chris Kloss. I know, man. I know you like to spank uh, Shabir Ali. I know. And you did an amazing job, by the way, in your debate with him. Let us play it, guys. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find a video for you guys. All right. Shabir Ali, brother. What do you have to say, Shabir Ali? Guys, I hope you're interested how you're going to barbecue Shabir Ali. He's one, he's one of the brightest, <coughs> brightest Muslim apologists of today. We know lately we, he, is, he has been... Uh, called out and many Muslims started to call him a wannabe Muslim, a fake Muslim, because he's rejecting even Sahih Hadith. This guy that you see, he calls Sahih Hadith forgery. He's ashamed of Hadith, a lot of Hadith. But anyway, you know, because he's one of the best, so-called best, we're going to spank one of the so-called best. I mean, look at his beard, man. You know, don't you want to have a beard and you know, Trimmed mustache, no mustache, you know. I wonder if Muhammad would have looked like him. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim before we continue, guys? No Muslims? Wow. All right, let me play the video, guys, and we will go from there. Anything in the Bible indicating that. On the contrary, there are things indicating that Jesus uh, expected other prophets to come after him and he's teaching Christians how to differentiate between the true prophet and the false prophet. Now, in John yes, chapter your prophet 14, is false prophet, yeah. 15 and 16, there are John things 14. Jesus okay. which, in which he predicts the coming of the paraclete. Look at in David John chapter 14, verse 26, <laughs> it says clearly the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. So okay. Christians fight. Guys, guys, guys. Now, look, look at David Wood. Now he's smiling. 15 and 16, there are sayings of Jesus which, in which he predicts the coming of the paraclete. In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says clearly the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. So Christians cite that and say, Muslims, you don't know what, it's talking, what you're talking about. Jesus clearly the spoke about the Holy Spirit. Who is the paraclete? The prophet Muhammad. Okay, yeah. but let's uh, look at Christian history and how this has actually been discussed by Christian scholars. Hans Windisch, for example, in his book on the topic, says that what Jesus originally predicted was a human being, another human being, a prophet like Jesus. How then did it come to be the Holy Spirit in, in John chapter 14, verse 26? This, this guy, Muslim, is this guy the best that you have? Is this guy the best that you have? Really? Is this guy the best one, Muslims? Guys, the only thing they can do, Muslims, the only thing they can do is by showing us their ignorance. When they go to John 14, for example, or John 16, they show us that Muhammad 
is the Holy Spirit. Muhammad himself, according to Shabir Ali, is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Try not to get crazy, guys. Try not to get your laughs, right? Like David, David Wood was laughing, man. Did you see David Wood's face? When you go to John 14 to prove that this, this is the same Muhammad that Jesus is talking about, there will be another advocate, another comforter. You are calling Muhammad the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are calling Muhammad God, man. You are blaspheming, you are committing shirk. Yeah, Shabir Ali, you idiot. Shabir Ali, you just called Muhammad God. We know that you Muslims, especially the Sunnis, you love to worship Muhammad. We know that. Do you really need to also show us that Muhammad is God of the Holy Bible? Is that what you're trying to do, Shabir Ali? In fact, C.K. Barrett, uh, in his commentary on John's Gospel, shows that some early manuscripts did not have exactly. the holy in this place, and it just simply said spirit. So, if we're talking about the spirit of truth, that's possible, uh, possibly a, a depiction of a human being who is so much the embodiment. Possible, brother. Not certainty, but possible, brother. Okay, okay. So you're not even certain. Spirit okay. Truth that is referred to as the spirit of truth. <laughs> Other indications spirit of truth that, is fact, Muhammad. Uh, what Jesus was speaking about was not the Holy Spirit to come. The Holy Spirit was always uh, was all, already always there. Uh, but uh, he, Jesus was talking about someone who was not there yet and who would come later on. It is true that some of the sayings are stylized to make it mean that it is the Holy Spirit. Like You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Guys, he, again, again, let me prove to you that this guy is nothing but a liar and deceiver like all the Muslim apologists. This is John 14 that he is talking about, right guys? Let us go to John 1 14. Sorry, John 14 and go and see what John 14 is saying. This is John 14, right? Do you see it? John 14, same John 14 that you're talking about. It's amazing, man, that Muslims love to show us that Muhammad is God. Right? If we go, go through some verses. We'll go through some verses, guys, okay? I'm not going to do my very best. I'm just going to read, right? I'm not going to put my own words. I'm only going to read. What does Jesus says? First of all, the same chapter that you are quoting, Mr. Uh, Shabir Ali, with your big beard, amazing beard. Jesus is talking about his father. Do you see it? Do you Muslims believe that God is father? So by going to John 1, sorry, John 14, you're actually proving that Jesus is destroying Muhammad. Right? Stupidity is amazing, someone is saying. Exactly, Ray E. Stupidity is amazing. So when Jesus is talking about his father, do you believe that God is father? No, you don't, because Allah is father to no one according to the Quran. You just spank Muhammad and his God. Thank you. Mr. Shabir Ali. And if you continue reading, it says, And if I go, Jesus is saying, and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. So Jesus has the authority to take people with him to his kingdom, to the kingdom of heaven. Wow! Seems that Jesus is not only a mere prophet, huh? Jesus has the authority to take people to heaven. Right? And Jesus saying, you know the way to the place where I'm going. Je Jesus knows that he's going back to, to the Father in heaven. Jesus is the way to the Father, even the chapter name. Look at the chapter name, guys. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. So how can we know the way? So, you know, Thomas, one of the disciples is still confused. And he's asking Jesus. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered. I am the way. Look how Jesus is claiming to be God. I am the truth. If you go to the Quran, the one who claims to be the truth is Allah. Muslims, clearly, again, Jesus is saying he is God. Do you see it? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to Jesus' name, the name above all names. He is the truth, the way, and life. Right? 
He is the way and the truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if you don't accept me to be the Son of God, you will not see the Father. You will not go back to the Father. Muslims, when you deny the Son, as we explained to you before, when you deny the Son, you deny the Father and you will be in hellfire. Deal with it. If you cannot handle the truth, Muslims, it's on you, it's your funeral. You deny the Son, you deny the Father. It's on you. You will be punished and you're nothing but an antichrist. So Jesus says, continue, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So Jesus say, if you see me, you've seen the Father. I and, I and the Father are one. From now on, you do know him and I, you have seen him. So if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Here Jesus made himself equal with the Father. Right? You Muslims are blind. You cannot read. Right? You go to chapter 14 of John, John 14. You forgot about the verses that come for and after the Comforter. You forgot about these verses, Mr. Shabir Ali, with your big beard, with your beautiful beard. And you don't see that Jesus is saying from now on, you do know, you know him, you know the Father and have seen him because you have seen me. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Right? One of the disciples said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Then look at Jesus' response, guys. Pay, pay attention, guys. Help me to help you. Jesus answers, don't you know me, Philip? You still don't know me? Even after I've been among you so, such a long time? Anyone, Jesus saying, and I quote, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Wow! Another deity claim. Another, again, Jesus again saying that he, he and the Father are equal. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Peter M. says stupidity is amazing. Exactly, brother. What can we do? This is the stupidity of the Muslims. So here again, Jesus making himself equal with the Father. How dare you Muslims? How dare you to go to John 14? Because John 14 spanks your prophet. And spanks the Quran and Allah. Because Allah claims to be not a father. And you deny that Jesus is the son. When you deny the father, you deny the son. And you're nothing but an antichrist, Muslims. You are the antichrist. So how can you say, Jesus saying, show us the father? Don't you believe that I'm in the father and the father is in me, Jesus saying? The, word, the words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this, His work. Wow, this, these are, these are claims, man, that Jesus is dropping here. Jesus over and over and over in John 14 that you love to talk about, Mr. Shabir Ali, is over and over and over claiming deity. He claims to be God and equal with the Father. Ma uh, Shabir Ali, if you're watching, please drop down your pants, start to record and spank yourself from behind, Mr. Shabir Ali. Please upload it on YouTube so we can laugh about you. Please, man. Please, man, do it. I really need to laugh about your uh, beard, brother. Uh, Mr. Hussein Zamani, give me a verse where Jesus says, Directly, I am not God and do not worship me. Mr. Hussein Zamani, I challenge you, since you brought this challenge up, I count, I challenge you to show me a verse from the Holy Bible, from the Injil, where it says, where Jesus is saying, I'm not God, I'm not God, do not worship me. Can you show it? So, one minus one is zero, brother. Deal with it. Idiot. You are aided, man. All the verses that are here shown is not enough for you. Where Jesus is making himself equal with the Father. You must be truly the biggest idiot that I've seen in my life show. On the live chat. Idiot. My friend, our God 
if you read the Holy Bible in, in its entirety, our Holy God does not need to brag every second, every time. He, t he brings something down through the Holy Spirit. He does not need to say, I am God. That would be really a very, very pride God if he would do that. Satan is it would do that, not God. God does not always need to tell us, hey, I'm God, worship me, man. Right? God clearly in the angel says, for God loved the whole world. He sent down, he sent his only begotten son. Because he loves us, this is why he wants us to be saved. God does not need to repeat himself. Right? Thank you, Chris Claus. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Uh, and let us go to the part. Let's see where that part is. Okay. See, even the chapter, guys. Look at the chapter's name, man. Shabir Ali, you idiot. Shabir Ali, you idiot donkey. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not trying to insult any real donkey, okay? Please. If there's any real donkey, please. I'm not trying to insult you when I talk to Shabir Ali and say to him, you're a donkey. I'm not trying to insult any real animal, man. Do you see it? Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Shabir Ali, you idiot. Jesus continuing saying, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another comforter, another paraclete to help you and be with you forever. Who is that paraclete? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the third part of the triune Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the same Holy Spirit. So when you say it's Muhammad, you are making Muhammad God. When Muslims, guys, in other words, in a nutshell, when Muslims say it is Muhammad, then they are making Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. How dare you to insult God, man, by comparing a disgusting fake prophet like Muhammad to the Holy Spirit. You are blaspheming the Holy Spirit. You see how Shabir Ali is nothing but a deceiver and a liar? Uh, to be honest with you guys, I'm not kidding you. If I was a sincere Muslim, guys, I hope you're listening. If I was a sincere Muslim, I would want to go to Mr. Shabir Ali, grab him by that beautiful beard, and drag him over the floor and say to his face, you are lying, you are making my prophet to be God. You are committing shirk and lying and deceiving us Muslims. If there are truly, truly sincere Muslims out there who are listening to Shabir Ali, go to his house, take him by his beard and drag him over the floor because he's calling Muhammad God. Grab him by his beard, man. He's lying to you, man. He's calling Muhammad a God. He's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. He is a blasphemer, man. Are you a blasphemer in Islam when you call Muhammad God Muslims? That's what Shabir Ali just did. He just called Muhammad God. And all the Muslim apologists, when they go to John 14 and claim that the advocate, the paraclete, is Muhammad, they are blaspheming, committing shirk, and say that Muhammad is God of the Holy Bible. That's the highest sin, the highest sin. Even in Christianity, when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven, Mr. Shabir Ali. And in Islam, it's also the capital sin when you become a shirk guy, right? You become a blasphemer. Wow. If we continue reading, you know, even the chapter name, man, look, it's the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit is going to be sent down and it's the Spirit of the truth. Do you see it? The world cannot accept Him. Guys, this is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. I mean, you can see Muhammad with your own eyes, right? The Sahaba saw Muhammad with their own eyes. But here it says, the truth, the spirit of truth cannot be seen. Do you see it? But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Muslims, Muslim, Muslims. Is Muhammad inside you? Ew. Ew. Muhammad lives inside the Muslims. He will be in you. 
you. I mean, you want Muhammad inside you, my friend. In Christianity, we believe that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't have any issue with that. We are guided by the Holy Spirit. But in Islam, when you're saying that the Holy Spirit is Muhammad and you're blaspheming, you're committing shirk and say that the Holy Spirit is inside you, which is Muhammad <laughs> that you claim, that means you are, you want Muhammad inside you. Are you gay, man? There's something wrong with you, man. Muhammad will be inside you, man. Well, uh, it's your funeral, Muslims. Shabir Ali, it's your funeral if you want Muhammad to be inside you. Man. Man, oh man. If we scroll down, guys, to, to see who it actually is, who the Spirit of Truth is, Jesus continues to make it even more clear to the disciples, so the disciples should not be confused anymore. I mean, these are mere men, right? They were confused. They were fishermen, uh, tax collectors like Matthew, right? Jesus continues in verse 25 and makes it even more clear who the Holy Spirit is, who the Spirit of Truth, the Advocate, the Baraklete. Read with me, guys. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate, that same advocate, the comforter, the paraclete, is the Holy Spirit. Do you see it? Whom the Father will send in my name again. On your face, Shabir Ali. You're an idiot, you cannot read. This proof that Shabir Ali cannot read. He cannot read. Do you see it? It's in front of you. Verse 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, which is part of the triune Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit is the advocate. Do you see it? Any Abdul who wants to protect Shabir Ali from spanking and his prophet. Do you see how Muslim apologists call Muhammad God of the Holy Bible, guys? Do you see how Islam cannot be defended by just their only job is to play with our scripture? You play with our scripture like merciful servant, removing the Lord from Isaiah 42 verse 13, placing three dots, playing with the text, removing Jehovah, our holy Lord, living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, playing with the text, saying that that's Muhammad. You Muslims are Evil son of Satan's when you play with our scripture. Who is corrupting the scripture? You Muslims, not us. Shame on you. When you play with our scripture like merciful servant does, right? And when Shabir Ali plays with the scripture, you are the one who are playing with the scripture, corrupting the scripture, not the Christians. You see the double standards, guys? Shabir Ali, please repent, man. We don't want you to burn. In hellfire, please repent for your lies and deception. So finally, guys, we found Muhammad in the Bible. Muslims call him God. Shirk 101 detected, brother. Muhammad is finally in the Bible and Muslims claim he's God. You see it? That's their claim. Muhammad is God himself. Thank you for showing us that you are nothing but blasphemers. Do we have any Muslim guys? Uh, someone is saying in, in Skype, Rob, please watch out. And Abdul on Discord is announcing he knows your identity and will expose you. Good luck with that, my friend. I have a VPN. <laughs> I have one of the best VPNs. Even Allah don't know where I am. I can be in Japan. I can be in the United States. I can be in the United Kingdom. I can be in Nigeria. I have a, I have one of the best VPNs. Don't worry, guys. Come on. It's the Muslim, Muslims, you know, wasting our time. You know? <clears throat> Look, guys. 
if you go here, look, according to my VPN, I'm in Great Britain. Do you see it? Great Britain. You can find me now at the moment in Great Britain, brother. <laughs> Good luck with that, guys. Good luck. People who know me, they know I don't live in Great Britain. <laughs> if you know me, you know I'm not from Great Britain. I think, uh, you know, tomorrow maybe I might be in Canada. I'm all over the place, bro. Allah cannot even enter creation, but Rob Christian can be everywhere. I'm even more powerful than Allah himself, brother. Thank you, Carolina. Carolina says, God will protect you and your family, Rob Christian. Thank you. We don't, we are not scared, guys. You know, we are not scared. But, you know, Muslims, they actually do want to kill us. I've received many death threats during the years, you know, many, many. We're not scared. Let them come. Are you going to buy me flowers? Maybe you want to ask me for a nice dinner. Uh, I, by the way, I love seafood. All right. If you want to invite me for a nice dinner, I love seafood, brother. All right. Do we have any Muslims? Uh, Chris Claus, are you still with us? Chris Claus, I want you to call me, brother. Maybe you want to add something to what has been discussed today? Please do. My Skype is open. Send me a message if you want to call me or I'm, I can call you back. But I love to talk to you after so long time. <clears throat> We're, the line is open for the Christians, but I want Chris Claus to call me first, guys, if that's okay with you. Chris Claus, are you there, brother? Okay. Please call me, my friend. Chris Claus, guys, for people who just joined, our brother in the live chat, Chris Claus, he debated Shabir Ali, and you can find the debate on YouTube. He spanked Shabir Ali without any mercy. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Rahman, yeah, Abdul Shaitan, yeah, Abdul Shaitan. You said Jesus is a man, not a God, and can, God cannot be a man. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, you idiot. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Go back to, to Muhammad. You will die, you will die in your insults and you will die in your sin. It's your funeral, man. Hello, welcome guys. <clears throat> okay, uh, Chris Claus will call me soon. Okay, uh, okay, let me call him back. I missed the call. Hello, my my friend. You're live on air, Chris Claus. Welcome. Good day, Rob. How you, how you doing, sir? Can you hear me? Yeah, you, I can hear you loud and clear. Welcome. God bless you, my friend. How are you? God bless you, brother. God bless you, too. How oh, are you, brother? Now, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. I've been chopping at the bit waiting uh, to call you. And, mm. and you've been... <laughs> the video that you've made today and the other videos that you've done, man, they're awesome. And, and just, Thank I, you. I, I pray you. that God keeps blessing you so that you're able to do this. God and everybody in the too, chat... And everybody in the chat, too, if you feel blessed by God to be able to help Rob, please do that so that you can able to, so we're able to support him in doing what he's doing. Thank you, my friend. Also, guys, like I said earlier, please support our brother here, Chris Claus. He's an amazing apologist. He has a YouTube channel. He has his own ministry. Also support him. Chris Claus, maybe if you can uh, uh, drop your uh, YouTube channel or maybe ask the admins, they will drop it, too. And uh, maybe you can tell how you how they can find you on YouTube, my friend. Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, I'm working with about four or five people right now. Eric, mm -hmm. uh, Jay Habor, Robert yeah. Wells. You know a few of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Barrett, I know. Royalson. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've actually got a website called, it's Eric the Kafir right now. Uh, but we have a, a group that talks every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we call that the Cross and the Crescent Discussion Group. Uh, so you can search either one. Um, and, and we do those weekly. But getting back into the conversation about uh, Shabir Ali and quoting John chapter 14 to try to say that the Paracletos yeah. and or the Comforter is Muhammad. Well, well, just for now, let's use buffering just a second. Uh, people who are listening, okay. can you please uh, confirm that we're still with you? Can you hear us? Give me one in the live chat, guys, so we can continue and our discussion will not be uh, in vain. Guys, refresh, okay? Okay, they are they are hearing us again, okay. Refresh, let me put it in the live chat. Guys, refresh, okay? Admins, tell to the people to refresh. All right, continue. Sorry for that, uh, Chris Claus. Continue what you said, my friend. 
Excellent. So, so let's just assume that yes. Muhammad is this comforter that the Muslims are saying. Mm. If we actually go to John 15, verse 26. Yeah, let me actually, go there, bro, so the people can see it on the screen. John 15, yep. and which verse? Verse 26. And go ahead and read it for them if you'd like. Sure. John 15, 26. Guys, let me read it. The work of the Holy Spirit. That's the chapter name. Verse 26. Chapter 15, verse 26. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, Jesus is saying. Go ahead. Amen, brother. Amen. But who sends the Spirit? It was Jesus. Yes, exactly. But who sends prophets? God. Right. Only God sends prophets, right? Yes. So if, in fact, Muslims want to say that the comforter, the the Paracletos, is in fact Muhammad, then they have to admit that Jesus is God because Jesus sends Muhammad. Exactly. You see the highlighted text, right, guys? It's Jesus saying, when the advocate comes, whom I will send. Who will send it? Jesus will send. So Muslims, if you claim that's Muhammad... If you claim that the advocate, the comforter, is Muhammad, as our brother here, Chris Claus, just mentioned. If you claim that that's Muhammad, that means Jesus is the God of Muhammad. He is the one who sent Muhammad to the Muslims. Wow! Wow! Are you claiming that Jesus is God, Muslims? And it Do you agree with us? Do you agree with us? <laughs> and it even gets worse, Rob. Yeah. Let's go back one chapter before that you actually just went through. Yes, because, which uh, verse, which verse of chapter 14? Well, first off, you said that Jesus identis, ad, identifies himself as Al-Haq. Yes, Al-Haq. He yes, he is the truth, yes. Okay, so what is the spirit? Isn't it the spirit of Al-Haq? Uh, according to Muslims, yeah, because if that's Muhammad, then he is the but, Haq. Yeah. And even in John 14, I believe it's around verse 16, yes. um, when it says the spirit of truth will come. Yes. The, the world spirit. cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So Muhammad will be inside the Muslims. Wow. So this, so the spirit of truth is sent, but who is the truth? Yes. Jesus claims that he is the truth. Exactly. So He's it would be the spirit yeah. of God that yeah. was sent. Jesus, of course, is claiming to be God. Exactly. al haq Al-Haq, guys, is one of the 99 names of Allah, right? So if Jesus is claiming to be Al-Haq, that means he's claiming to be Allah according to you Muslims. Uh -oh. Now one last destruction here, Rob, on, on sure. the uh, Perkletos verses, if you wouldn't mind. No problem, go okay. ahead, bro. It's, it's your, it's, the show is yours, go ahead. Excellent. So if, in fact, a Muslim says that this is a prophecy about Muhammad, let's mm -hmm. say, okay, I believe you. It's a prophecy about Muhammad. Yeah. Then ask them, who gives prophecies? Of course, God does. God does, yeah, for to, of course. For it to be a true prophecy, it would have to be from the true God, exactly. of course. So therefore, if that's a true prophecy about their prophet, then it must have been revealed by the true God. Therefore, the verses that they're using must be from the original Injil. If they're not from the original Injil, then they are not from the true God and cannot be a true prophecy. Yes, exactly. Wow, amazing <laughs> stuff, my friend. Now, I want to give you a little, a little uh, hint on my new argument for Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Yes. In, in uh, Deuteronomy 34, verses 10 to 12, mm -hmm. it gives us the criterion for one to be like Moses. Mm -hmm. It says that, the prophet must speak to God face to face, and exactly. the prophet must have the signs and wonders. Okay, wait as... just a second, brother. He must uh, speak to God face to face. Did Muhammad speak to Allah face to face? <laughs> Maybe shin to face. <laughs> no, the answer is no. So how how dare you Muslims to, to compare <laughs> Muhammad with Moses? Here, point one, number one, refuted, decimated. Continue, my friend. Amen. And the second point is that the prophet must bring signs and wonders as Moses did in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh 
and his people. Brother, stop. So, Did Muhammad do any miracles? No. Allah in chapter 14, ayah 4, clearly says, if I'm not mistaken, if that's the right chapter, I'm doing it out of my head, guys. Allah clearly says, we refrain, we refrain. Was it chapter 14? Anyway, somewhere in the Quran you can find, Allah refrained from sending miracles. Muhammad is nothing but a mere warner. If if Muslim scholars agree on it, they agree Muhammad could not do miracles. He was nothing but a mere warner. So how dare you to compare Muhammad with the true prophet Moses. So point number two, decimated. Continue. Amen, brother. Now, what we have to do is we have to analyze the second part of this criterion. It says the signs and wonders Moses did in Egypt to Pharaoh and his people. Mm -hmm. So we go back into the Exodus because that's where it was. And what happened is Moses was given signs by God to show Pharaoh and God's people yeah. that they were going to be free from bondage of slavery. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, when Moses come, he said, God said, let my people go. And then mm -hmm. the sign would come. Yeah, I want It'd to, I want to, my friend, just my a people. second, just a second. I want to correct myself, guys, because we don't want to lie. It's chapter 17, ayah 59. It says, and nothing stops us from sending the ayat proofs, evidence, signs, but that the people of the old deny them. So this is why Allah stopped sending signs, even to Muhammad. So... Allah stop sending signs. Do you see it, guys? Continue, my friend. Sorry. Continue. All right. So it, it, what Moses was, did was the signs to show Pharaoh and also to God's people that they were going mm -hmm. to be free from bondage of slavery. So now we have to, we have to ask ourselves, what mm -hmm. other prophet in history has ever brought a sign like that? Yeah. And, of course, it could only be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sign that he brought was the death and the resurrection. Yeah. And that is the sign to show us that we are free from bondage of the slavery of sin. Yeah. So therefore, Moses come with a sign to show the people that they would be free from the bondage of slavery. Jesus also came with a sign to show us that we were free from the bondage of slavery of sin. So therefore, of course, Jesus could be that only that prophet um, and Muhammad is nothing more than just a false prophet and a exactly. dirt dweller in Arabia. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank you so much, uh, brother Chris Kloss. I really missed you, my friend. You know, uh, guys, for people who do not know, Chris Kloss and I and others, we sit used to sit in the same Paul talk room back in the old days. So our brother here is a very old school debater and teacher. Uh, thank you, my friend. It's a blessing to have you on the live show on the call. Uh, may God bless your ministry too. Thank you for calling. Do you want to have, you want to say anything else before you go, my friend? I just want to say blessings to everybody in the chat and, and may God bless you and keep you doing what you're doing, brother. Thank you, my friend. God bless you too. And God bless you, your lost funds. Thank you for calling. That was amazing. Thank you, uh, Chris Claus. Thank you. Do we have any Muslims? <clears throat> Any Muslims? Any Muslim? Christians, you made the Muslims leave the live chat, man. Take it always easy on them, brother. Muslims, why are you so scared? If you Muslims claim that you follow Deen al-Haq, right, which means the religion of truth, Islam, why are you so scared? to call us live on air. Where are the Imams? Where are the Ustas? Where are the Shiyukh? To defend their fake prophet in the court of law. Any Muslim? Muslims, if you keep listening to liars and deceivers like Shabir Ali, who claim that Muhammad is God, you will die in your sins like Shabir Ali. And clearly they are not doing this for money and fame, right Muslims? Your shiuch and imams and apologists, they don't do this for money, right? Islam is not big business for the imams, right? Clearly. 
You see guys how those Imams, Ustaz and Shaykh, they are the ones who are keeping Islam alive. Maybe you have seen uh, yesterday one of the small videos that David Wood uploaded about that uh, Imam, I think he's from Canada. He is saying, he's saying if we don't do something about what is happening in the Muslim community, there going to be a tsunami. A tsunami, that's what the Imam said, right? On YouTube, it's going to be an avalanche. An avalanche of apostates. An av avalanche and tsunami of, yeah, Imam Bilal, that one, yeah, from Canada. He is honest. He said, he knows Islam is dying and they dare, you know, still some still smart Abdul, pride Abduls who say, Islam, brother, Islam is the fastest growing religion. Yeah, right. Islam, you mean Islam is the fastest dying religion? You know, I've, I've been following uh, David Wood. He, he's uploading very small but very effective videos. On every video I see in the comment section, under every video I see I left Islam. Muslim saying in the, live, in, the, uh, in the comment section, I left Islam, I left Islam. Thank you David Wood. Thank you Apologies Krishna. I left Islam. Because of you I left Islam. Because of you I left Islam. And Imam Bilal from Canada, he's, he's honest, he's, he knows. If we cannot stop these youth, these Muslim youth of today, it's going to be like a tsunami that will hit us. It will knock us over. That's what he was saying and I quote, it will knock us over. It will knock us over. It's going to be a tsunami. Let me look up the video guys because I want to share it for the people who did not see it. Let me see if I can find the video. I may, I uh, uploaded that video before by the way, before David would upload it. You can find it also between my other videos about Imam Bilal from Canada. But let's see if I can play the video so the Muslims can enjoy the video. Let's see. Uh, okay, I think this is the one. Alright. Let me see. You know, I think this is the video. Yeah, I think this is the one. Uh, let's see. Okay. Guys, put on your headsets. Let us play the video, okay? Canada, that they're in trouble. The Muslim community here. in a minority circumstance is a high risk community. High risk community. He admits that in a Muslim country, the situation is different because of the cultural pressure to conform. Back home in our countries where people grow up practicing Islam as a culture, as tradition, everybody conforms because of the pressure. The pressure, brother. They can force you to stay a Muslim. If you don't, if you leave Islam, we will kill you, right? Exactly. In, in Sharia implemented the countries. The result is that it's exactly. rare for people to announce their apostasy in exactly. Muslim countries. It is rare. Yeah. Because they, they're going to be killed, right? <laughs> Yeah. Here in the West, they cannot kill you. A young man or a young woman addressing their parents, their family, and telling them, I don't believe in Allah. But things are different in the West, even for Muslim parents exactly. who are raising their children to be devout Muslims. While I was in Doha, Qatar, Qatar, yeah, in Qatar. One sister called me from here. From a religious practicing family. Islamically active. She said, my son memorized the Quran at the age of 10. 
Hallelujah. Allahu Akbar. A child who has memorized the entire Quran he in Arabic. He memorized the Quran at the age of 10. Know that Islam is true. Because mm-hmm. the Quran is just so amazing in Arabic. But at the age of 15. Five years later. Five years later. She's mm-hmm. calling. She said he came home. And he left and Islam. told us that he doesn't believe in Allah. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Phillips is hearing so many stories of young people leaving Islam that he has to warn the Muslim community about the coming avalanche of apostasy. And if we don't take constructive steps to deal with this, it is going to become an avalanche, a tsunami. Of apostates. going to hit our community. Hard. <laughs> in such a way that we will have a very difficult time standing. Exactly. Islam is dying, brother. It will knock us over. It will An knock us over. An avalanche of apostasy. An avalanche. An avalanche. A tsunami of apostasy. A tsunami. A tsunami. Brother. What's it going to do? It will knock us over. It will knock us over. But brother. Bilal Phillips believes that there's a solution. What's the solution, Bilal? So this is what we have to convey to our young people. We have to connect them to the Quran intellectually, emotionally, psychologically. Good luck with that. Physically. In such a way that they have no doubt. Connect them to the Quran so that they have no doubt. That is adorable. Bilal, young people reading the Quran is what gives them doubts. Because the Quran totally contradicts everything they're told by their Muslim leaders and their Muslim parents. When young people read the Quran and they go to their Muslim leaders and their Muslim parents and they ask, Why does Allah command men to beat rebellious wives? Why does Allah command us to attack Jews and Christians? Their leaders and their parents reply, Oh, what Allah really meant is something completely different from what he said. And this doesn't remove doubts, it increases doubts. Because the young Muslims are being told that Allah is a horrible communicator who can't say what he means. So there's no way to keep young people from doubting the Quran. What else you got, Bilal? And also, they should know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is praying on him, yeah. They should know him well. Same mistake. How are young people going to learn about Muhammad? It had better not be by reading about him in Islam's most trusted sources because nothing will convince Muslims to leave Islam faster than reading what Muhammad's companions said about him. Exactly. So the only thing Muslim leaders and Muslim parents can do is try to convince young Muslims to believe in a fictional Muhammad, one who never existed, by giving them modern books about Muhammad that present a watered-down, whitewashed Walt Disney version of Muhammad. But that's not going to help because there are people like us who are going to tell these young Muslims the truth about Muhammad. And we're going to be the ones who are quoting Islam's most trusted sources. And the young Muslims are going to realize that their leaders and their parents have been lying to them. Exactly. And they're going to leave Islam. Hilariously, Bilal Phillips gives an example of how to respond to a young Muslim's doubts about Islam. It's a disaster. Here's how he sets it up. The Prophet ﷺ, as this individual that I spoke with a few days ago raised, did not prohibit slavery. So, slavery is evil. Why not? What kind of prophet is this? Exactly. You you call yourself Bilal. Guys, this guy calls himself Bilal, right? You do realize the Bilal that he himself is named after. Bilal, as long as Muhammad was alive, Bilal the slave, the black slave, stayed a slave. Muhammad dies and he's still a slave. 
Slavery 101 in Islam, brother. Muhammad bought slaves, Muhammad sold slaves, and Muhammad traded black slaves. That's Islam 101. Muhammad, the slave owner and seller. Muhammad owned Bilal, like owing a chair or a, a bathroom or whatever, a car. Muhammad owned Bilal. And Bilal stayed a black slave, even after the death of Muhammad. God is condoning slavery? Yes. It's not simply that Muhammad didn't Islam prohibit is. slavery. It's that Muhammad bought, owned, sold, and traded slaves, and had exactly. sex you see, with his that, female David, slaves. And exactly. Muslims in the West have been told that Muhammad abolished slavery, and they're right. realizing that they've been lied to, and that they can't trust their leaders or their parents. So, Bilal, how are you going to correct these young Muslims? But he didn't know how Prophet Muhammad ﷺ treated those who were slaves. The slaves who were in his household, he adopted, made them... Yeah, he adopted Zayd, the slave, guy, Zayd ibn Muhammad, he became his son. What did Muhammad, how did Muhammad treated his adopted slave who became his son? Zayd, he slept with his wife. Muhammad stole his wife and slept with her, Zainab bint Jash, his own daughter-in-law. How did he treat his slaves? By stealing his women. He's stealing his wife. I'm a part of his family. Subhan Muqallib al They loved him so much. Glory to the one who turns heart. parents came, they preferred to stay with the Prophet ﷺ as a slave rather than go with their own parents. Oh my goodness. Muhammad adopted his slaves. They didn't want to go back to their own families. <laughs> there are young people who are dumb enough to fall for an answer like that. But when they go and share that answer on the internet, they're going to be in trouble. Exactly. What happens if they take a closer look at Bilal's response. Yes. Here's what they'll find. Muhammad didn't adopt his slaves. He adopted one particular slave, Zayd bin Haratha. Exactly, Zayd. Zayd was Khadija's slave before she married Muhammad. When she married Muhammad, she gave Zayd to Muhammad as a present. Exactly, as Zayed's a present slave. eventually came looking for him because he'd been kidnapped, and Zayd said that he was going to stay with Muhammad. Muhammad was so impressed that he adopted Zayd, and Zayd was then called Zayd, son of Muhammad. Ibn Muhammad, exactly. This was before exactly. Muhammad declared himself to be a prophet. Exactly. After Muhammad declared himself to be a prophet, things began to change. One day, Muhammad saw Zayd's wife, Zainab, practically naked, and he walked and said, away, Subhan God. Al Zayd found out about it and divorced exactly. Zainab so that his prophet and adopted father could have her. Muhammad married Zainab, but this caused an uproar in the community because marrying the wife of your own adopted son was frowned upon by everyone. Exactly. It's a disgusting really behavior from like Muhammad. People criticizing Muhammad, so Allah abolished adoption. Here you go, brother. Allah comes with a good solution for Muhammad stealing the wife of his adopted son, Zayd ibn Muhammad. He abolished adoption. From that moment on, Muslims could not adopt any children anymore. Just for the sexual lust of Muhammad, adoption was abolished. Because Muhammad lusted after his own daughter-in-law, the wife of his adopted son, Zayd bin Muhammad. And you Muslims dare to call this a man of God? And instead of Muhammad, Allah, Allah punishing Muhammad for lusting after his own adopted son's wife, he even helps him out. He helps the penis of Muhammad out by saying, from now on, adoption is abolished in the Quran. Imagine guys, God of the Holy Bible, God of the Old Testament, punishes King David for his behavior. He punishes him 
But in Islam and only in Islam, Allah instead of punishing Muhammad, Allah helps Muhammad. What a shame. It's an insult for the true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And God punished King David for his nasty sin. Then King David repents, asks for forgiveness and repents. And God's forgive him. God did not say to King David, well done King David, well done King Solomon for your nasty sins. No, no, God punishes them. What, we, what do we see in Islam? Allah helps Muhammad. This proves that Allah is Satan and Muhammad is nothing but the agent of Satan. Right Muslims? Please Muslims, leave this satanic cult, this sex cult that Muhammad created for his own sexual desires. And we know what Aisha said, right guys? What did Aisha say? I see that your Lord hastens to fulfill your desires. Muhammad. Aisha saying, I only see that he hastens to fulfill your sexual desires. Allah is no one else but the suck puppet of Muhammad, right? Allah is the suck puppet of Muhammad. Muhammad created Islam together with Khadija and Waraka for his own power, right? For his own sexual desires. That's it. That's why Islam is created in the first place. Yeah, Aisha busted Muhammad. Exactly. Exactly. Do we have any Muslims? Do we have any Muslims? Any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us? My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Anyone? Maybe we can take some calls, guys. Can we take some other calls? Maybe Christians who wants to call? Other Christians who wants to call? Since the Muslims are too scared to call us. Muslims, stop following a fake prophet who was tying his baby bride Aisha and you dare to tell us why we mock your prophet? We mock your prophet because Muhammad was tying a six-year-old girl Aisha by putting his penis between her legs and climaxing. Later, when she grows up, she becomes nine, he consumes the marriage by, you know, <clears throat> yeah. You ask us why we mock Muhammad Muslims? Why allow Muhammad to be mocked? Because he should have not walked around covered in semen so that his child bride again, Aisha, had to constantly scrape the semen off of him. Muhammad shouldn't tell his followers to suck on each other's fingers for barakah, for blessing. He should not tell his followers that according to Allah in the Quran, bees, a bee, bees poop honey, chapter 69, 69. Any Muslim in 2020 who actually believes that honey comes from the bellies of bees, bees poop honey. Wow. You must be really stupid to believe in this nonsense. Bees do not poop honey. That's a fact. Muhammad shouldn't tell his Sahaba, the companions, to hire prostitutes, whores, and sleep for them for a short period of time, i.e. the mut'a prostitution of Allah and his pimp Muhammad in chapter 4, ayah 24. Stop asking us to mock your prophet if he should not have taken the wife as mentioned, the wife of his adopted son Zayn bin Muhammad and saying when he saw her naked, Subhan muqallib al qulub Glory to Allah who turns heart and blaming Allah for falling in love with her. And so on, and so on, and so on. Thank you for the super chat, Amelia. Amelia says in the super chat, yay, they found Muhammad in the Bible. Finally, Muhammad is corrupted. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyone? 
Guys, I know maybe you've been asking us a lot of questions in the live chat. And as I always say, we cannot split ourselves in half teach and see the ch chat at the same time. So sorry for that. Oh, Chris Claus, thank you for, uh, for the super chat, my friend. Chris Claus says, God bless you, brother. God bless you, my friend. God bless you and your loved ones. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris Claus, you tried to call me again? Uh, you, you tried to call me again, brother? You want me to call you back? Chris Claus? I just saw that I have missed a call from you again. You want me to call you back, bro? Oh, okay. Okay, that meant that's from the first time. Uh, first name called me. Let me call this person back. Hello? Hello? Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. Please mute YouTube, my friend. Mute YouTube. Only talk through Skype, please. I just did. Okay. I apologize. Welcome. Um, your life on air, brother. What do you want to say? Wonderful. So the following statement needs a pre-qualifier, and that is more research is due on my part. Mm -hmm. However, I would argue that the, there is a, possibly a passage that does talk about Muhammad in the Bible. Okay. And that is? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, going on for several verses. Can you read it, please, for us? Uh, this is the King James Version. Mm -hmm. um, let me read it in context. So I'm going to start with uh, the top of chapter 2. Mm -hmm. um, now we beseech you, brethren, by coming of our uh, Lord Jesus Christ, gathering together unto him, that ye not be swooned, shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by the Spirit, or by word, or by letter from us, that the day of uh, Christ is at hand. Um, basically, there was those that believed in the first century that Christ was immediately returning. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't going to be a time period that he did not return for a while. Mm -hmm. And so they had gotten lazy. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except coming by the following way first. That a man of sin uh, be revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Wow. So did you just call Muhammad a false prophet, my friend? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. This is yeah. in, in the Bible. Now, more research is, is, is required for me, but when it says, for instance, the throne of God, well, if there was an earthly throne of God, this is the temple. Mm. And if you take it in, a literal, in that specific literal sense, um, mm. so um, that would be, you know, what, what do you call the uh, Dome of the Rock? Mm -hmm. Come on, guys. <laughs> Not hard. Yeah. And then he also exalts himself for the names that he attributes to himself. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but the praised one, the first and the last the judge. Yeah. Good grief. How many more places can you, or how many more ways can you say, I am God? Yeah. Well, the thing is about, uh, you know, uh, the sacred mosque and the farthest mosque, which they claim it's uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. We have a problem because... Uh, it doesn't exist. Yeah, it, in 70 AD, it was destroyed. Are you telling me Muhammad invented a time machine? He went back. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> he went back in, in, in history before it was destroyed. Is that what you're saying, Muslims? In 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the temple of Jerusalem. The temple of the second temple, right? So, I find it interesting that he didn't know oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> I think Muhammad uh, uh, bought a DeLorean from, uh, you know, the movie Back to the Future. He took the DeLorean and he said to Allah, beat me up, Scotty. He went uh, back in, 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 the, uh, in, in history, right? Back in, uh, in history, before the temple was uh, <laughs> dest uh, destroyed by the Romans. And then from there, he went, extended uh, to Jannah, right? To Jannah of Allah, brother. That's what happened, I think. Beat me up, Scotty, brother. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's interesting it's, because no it's one can see a lot. 
Yeah. But then you run into the problem of he was in a burning bush, and mm. he says, I am the God of Allah. Now what? Mm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But my friend, I let me let me give you a surprise. I found a book called Kitab al-Maghazi, Kitab al-Maghazi by a very early Muslim historian. His name is Al-Waqidi, right? Now Muslims will call him a liar, but he, they will not call him a, a liar when it comes to being an historian. They reject his hadith, but they actually call his uh, work when it comes to history, right? They call it authentic. Why? Why do I, am I mentioning Kitab al-Maghazi by Al-Waqidi? Here is why. Because according to his book, very early Islamic source, highly respected, According to that source, Muhammad, when he went to uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa, right, the mosque called Al-Aqsa, it was very close to an area between Mecca and Medina. It is a only 30 minute drive by car. You can find it. It's called Al-Ju'arana. So this so-called father's mosque that you see here, guys, on the screen, is very close to Mecca. It's only a 30 minute drive. It's an area called Al-Ju'arana in Kitab Al-Maghazi by Al-Waqidi. So that farthest mosque is not that far. It's not Jerusalem. Muhammad actually only went with his Buraq, right? A half being, which is half mule, half uh, uh, man. And he went to Al-Ju'arana, 30 minute drive from Mecca, 30 minute drive <laughs> by car. So he went to there and then he ascended to heaven, according to the hadith. So, so he went from Petra to there, that's hilarious. No, no, he didn't went to Petra, he went from Mecca, right? A, 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 you know, he went to Mecca, from Mecca to 30 minute drive to Al-Ju'arana, very close to Mecca, a area called Al-Ju'arana. I can even show it on Google Maps. Let me show it on Google Maps, guys, before you call me a liar. It's called Al Jaran. Uh, I, I know, I know, my like friend. But Muslims, I'm talking about yeah. the Muslims. Here is Al Jaran, and here is Mecca. Let me put it on the screen, guys. So, here it is. This is Google Maps, guys. Google Maps. It's a actually 27, 30, 30, 33 minute drive. Do you see it, Al Jaran? It's called Al Jaran. So Muhammad went from Mecca. To Al Jawarana, it's only a 33 minute, 33 minute drive by car. So he went from here to there and then he went to heaven. He didn't go to Jerusalem. And we can find this information in Kitab al Maghazi by Al Waqidi. Bam! Al Jawarana. So Muslims have been lying to us. Uh -huh. Al Aqsa Mosque was in Al Jawarana. Go find it. It's in Kitab al-Maghazi by al-Waqidi. What do you want to add, my friend, on top of this? I mean, the whole, the entire Muslim thing is a whole bunch of history that has no actual history, no archaeological history no, behind it. No, exactly. Now, there's a reason why they're concreting Mecca. Yes, they they dropped concrete. They could, and before dropping concrete, they sent uh, uh, people who to investigate, right? To see uh, archaeologists, right? To see if there's something they can find. They could not find anything. Can you imagine? The for 1,400 years. <laughs> yeah, they could not find anything. After they confirmed there's no histor historical evidence there, they dropped concrete and they built this high tower of Satan with the horns on top, right? Yeah. Exactly. And they wanted to be the center of time. Yes, yes. Uh, like, nope. they, they wanted to try to copy the Big Ben, right? Yep, they did. They spent yeah. how much money on it? Some absurd. The clock face is made from gold. Yeah. But yeah. The Satan horn looking down. On it, I was like, yeah, Satan's good. horn looking down on uh, on 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 his uh, black box, the Kaaba, right? Do you see it, guys? Look at this devil horns, man. Looking the Satan looking on down to his house, the the Kaaba. Well, you see it? <laughs> so. I find it hilariously amusing in a messed up way that they say that images are not allowed, yet they want to continuously reuse the Persian glyph of the crescent moon and star. Yeah. That's not Islamic. 
that's Persian. <laughs> well, if it's not Islamic, what is it doing uh, in Mecca? Do you see the devil horns, guys? Is this the horn of Satan looking down on his house of Satan, the Kaaba? If it's not, if no. it's not Islamic, <laughs> Baal, yeah, the house of Baal. Um, oh man, oh man, oh man! Endless contradictions of being endlessly contradicted. Yeah. Exactly, my friend. My friend, thank you for calling. God bless you. Thank you for Have this fun. amazing uh, call and uh, keep calling us back, my friend. God bless you. No problem. Have a great day. You too. You too. Blessings. Bye bye. Hey guys, it is what it is. That's Islam 101, guys. What can we do? Everything that we find in Islamic books go against Islam. Muslims claim that Muhammad went with his Burak, right? He jumped on his Burak, this being which is half man, half mule, and he went from Mecca to Jerusalem, which is a lie. Right? If we go, like I said, in Kitab al-Maghazi, Kitab al-Maghazi by Al-Waqiri, we can find that this Al-Aqsa Mosque is an area called Al-Ju'rana. It's only a 33-minute 33, 33 hour drive, 33-minute drive from Mecca to Al-Ju'rana. So Al-Aqsa Mosque was here, and Muhammad went with his Burak from here to there, and that's it. He didn't go to Jerusalem, my friends. He didn't go to Jerusalem. It's a lie. They invented that later. Right? They invented that later. And the real Aqsa Mosque, guys, is built much later by Al Malik, Cal Caliph Al Malik, and his son. His son finished it much later in 705. Muhammad died in 652, right, guys? If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. And Al-Aqsa Mosque that you now can see in Jerusalem was finished in 705. How is this possible, Muslims? How is this possible? Use your brains. Use, use oh, 632. Sorry, guys, 632. I made a mistake. 632. All right. That's why I said correct me if I'm wrong. 632. And in 705, that's even more horrible. All right, guys? That's even more horrible. If Muhammad died in 632... And Al-Aqsa Mosque is finished by the son of King, oh sorry, the, by the son of Caliph Al-Malik in 705. How did Muhammad go to Al-Aqsa Mosque? This actually proves my point even more. It makes it even more worse. And proves my claim from Kitab Al-Maghazi by Al-Waqidi, early Muslim historian, Al-Waqidi, in his book, Kitab Al-Maghazi. You can go find it, I think it's even in Amazon. He went from here, from Mecca, to al Jorana. That's it. That's it. Right? That's it. Muslims, you need to wake up. This is why Imam Bilal, you heard Imam Bilal? We will have an avalanche, a tsunami. You know why? Because you Imams, you Shiuch have been lying to the Muslim Children, your Muslim children, you have been deceiving them. When your children start to read the Quran, the Hadith, the Islamic sources, of course they're going to leave Islam. Of course they're going to leave Islam, right? It's because of you, because of your lies, they are leaving Islam. That's why. It's because of you and your deception, they are leaving Islam. Wake up, Muslims. Don't let these liars and deceivers keep deceiving you in 2020. You have to wake up. Please come back home to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Drop Islam, drop Muhammad, and please come back home, Muslims. Clearly, Muhammad lied when he created Islam together with his wife, Khadija. It was the wish of Khadija for Muhammad to become a prophet. She was the richest woman of Mecca. She wanted to make her prophet, uh, her husband a prophet, the first prophet of the, Islam, the Arab nation. She was envying, she was jealous of the Jews and the Christians for their prophets. And she wanted Muhammad, her husband, to become the first prophet of Islam, of the Arabic nation. This is why the Muslim kids of today, when they 
do some investigation. They read the Quran, they read the Hadith, they read the Tafsir, they read the Islamic sources. This is why they leave Islam. Guys, I think we had a lovely time together. To the Muslims, you need to wake up. Wake up! Please drop Muhammad and come back home to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Drop Muhammad and his sock puppet Allah. Come back home. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. God bless your families. Make sure guys to subscribe if you didn't already do that. Smash that like button. Click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your support. I cannot thank you enough, guys. If you want to support us through social media, that's the Facebook link. And if you want to support our ministry, you can do that through Patreon. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your amazing support. Jesus is Lord. And Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Please Muslims, wake up. God bless you guys. And Lord willing, we will see each other again in a future live show. God bless.